everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I have got so much to talk to you all about. There's such exciting things going on that uh, I had to make, write it down and make a list, you know. So, I don't know if you guys recall, I had showed you that I made a dress, a simplicity pattern dress that I was going to wear to a T for my Daughters of the American Revolution uh, chapter. We had our 30th anniversary and uh, white gloves, hats, the whole nine yards, right? Well, I did not design that dress or I chose the wrong pattern <laughs> for a 42 degree blustery day. So, needless to say, I didn't wear the dress. And that, you know, I went to all the trouble. I got shapewear, I got a slip. Oh, you know, that reminds me, the reason you can't find slips around here uh, that go under a dress is because it's South Texas and that's another layer and they just don't sell down here. So a lot of you had mentioned Women Within and Vermont's Trading Company or so, whatever, you know, way up north. So um, anyway, I ended up ordering one from Amazon and it's a Vanity Fair. It was fine. It was fine. But didn't need it. But now I'm prepared for the next one. I got to the T. And we had invited five state officers. Y'all, there's about 180,000 daughters, D-A-R. D-A-R is the, um, you can trace your lineage back to uh, one of your ancestors fought in the American Revolution. And uh, so the D-A-R National Headquarters is right around the corner from the White House. So pretty big deal, you know. They just wonderful they they're they're big on historic preservation and they're big on education and all of that and so it's a our tea for our 30th anniversary was a big deal so i get there and uh the state regent is there her name is susan tillman very delightful lady and i'm the vice regent for my chapter so i went up to her and i said miss you know regent tillman thank you for coming we appreciate you making the trip and all that because it was horrible weather oh hi blue it was horrible weather and so uh anyway i was talking to her and everything and, and then i said where do you live and she said houston and i said oh i'm going to be going to houston i think in the end of april well actually humble because there is an embroidery class down there with Lisa Shaw and it's on in brilliance and she says oh, are you an embroiderer and I said yes are you she says oh yes I just bought the brother luminaire and I'm like no kidding so, <laughs> hello Harley so I sat down next to her and we started talking embroidery you know isn't that funny how this hobby you meet somebody who does it with you and you just click instant friends and so we were visiting and talking and everything, and I'm kind of in awe that I'm talking to the state regent. Because, y'all, my chapter, we're very rural. You know, we're, we're just these little podunk folks down here in South Texas. And uh, she was just the sweetest, sweetest lady. And so while I was sitting there visiting with her, we were almost ready to start. And um, the uh, a f former regent for the chapter, uh, Linda, she comes around and takes my name tag from a table, wherever it was, and plopped it right in front of me where I was at. So I got to sit next to the state regent through the whole tea, and we talked embroidery just about the whole time. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> loved it. Absolutely loved it. Anywho, so now what else was I going to tell you guys? Oh, I was doing a tutorial for how to make the Kimberbell mug rug out of that uh, DVD, the volume one. And so I was going through part three, actually making the mug rug. And I, I got to the end and I, everything was fine. I finished it and I took it into the laptop to start editing the video. And you guys, that takes hours and hours and hours. So I get all the way to the end of the video and it stopped. I don't know if my battery died. I don't know if something happened to the chip, which is more the case. So I said, oh, you're kidding me. So I made, I had made this little mug rug, right? This cute little Kimber Bell mug rug. Isn't that precious? So that's the first one I made. Then 
when I realized the end of the video didn't take, I said, oh, so this was on, uh, this was Tuesday. So I said, and today's Wednesday, uh, the 12th of February, Survivor comes on tonight. Very excited. I'm a huge fan. Huge. I'm one of those people, you're like, this has been on for 40 seasons. Who watches this? I do. <laughs> it's a wonderful show into human behavior. Very cool. Anyway, so I, I made the whole mug rug again, right? And then when I got to the part where the first video, the first part of the video had stopped, I turned the camera on again, everything was fine, battery was full, filmed it again, finished another cute little mug rug, same pattern, different fabrics, okay? Took the chip into the laptop and it came up looking like fuzz. And I said, oh, man, seriously? Ah, so, y'all, I don't know. So I, I threw the chip away. I, I use the Sony Handycam. That's what I'm talking to right now. And the, the, it takes one of those little micro USB chips. You guys, those things fail all the time. When I go on a, uh, a field trip now, and I've got a couple of them planned, pretty soon. When I go on a field trip, I take multiple chips with me because you just never know what's going to happen with those things. So fortunately, the camera will usually tell you, you know, it'll give you a little blinky or it'll give you a little yellow deal chip looking thing on the screen. But if you're not looking at that, like when I was shooting on the Luminaire and I'm paying attention so my fingers don't get sewn down, right? I wasn't looking at that. I'd have seen it. So I'm, when I get done with this, I'm just going to go ahead and film uh, the very ending of that and then get it out on YouTube for part three of, the, of finishing up that uh, mug rug. I'm not making a third one. <laughs> Jeez. You guys are smart. You'll figure it out. Anyway, okay, so now what? Uh, so I don't know if y'all noticed, one of you very eagle-eyed ladies, when I was talking about doing, using a Millie Scott Designs to finish this delicately paper-pieced quilt that's an heirloom for somebody, and um, I actually was using a regular embroidery hoop, and one of you said, don't you have the snap hoop? Didn't I see that? And yes, you're right, I did. So what happened was, you hear your kids say that, your grandkids. Well, what happened was, so I had purchased that snap hoop a long, long, like 10 years ago. I had bought it, and it was in a clearance section at the actual Nancy's Notions up in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. I had gone up to visit my, um, my, my Aunt June and my Uncle Don up there, and they picked me up in Milwaukee. And so this was 2009, so it's 11 years ago. 2009, I get there. And my Aunt June, she's, she's driving me back from the, from the airport, and she says, we got a surprise for you. And I'm like, what? She says, do you want to go to Nancy's Notion? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, are you serious? <laughs> it was awesome. So I went in there, and I actually found that hoop on, in clearance. And so I think it was only like $100, which is a deal, right? It was a 9 by 14 That's a deal. And so I got it home and I started using it. This is long before I started. I didn't start blogging till 2015. So this is a long time before then. It occasionally had problems where my machine uh, would tell me, and this is on my Baby Lock Elegante too. It would tell me, switch to a larger hoop. Well, no, I don't need to. I know it fits in there. And it would have that problem off and on. And then, I don't know if you recall last fall, I was uh, stitching the, it was from the Fat Quarter Shop, the wreath quilt from the Fat Quarter Shop, and I was showing how to use the snap hoop in my videos, and it was working just fine, and I also used it on the Trapunto Table Runner that we did last summer. Well, while I was doing the wreath quilt, it finally gave up. It, it's, it had acted up, in her, you know, sporadically, it finally just died and it would not my machine would not see the hoop at all or it would see it and say switch to a larger hoop so it kept giving me error message and I thought oh gosh no 
So anyway, I contacted Dime about that because I remember years and years ago seeing some negative reviews about that hoop and I kind of could understand why. So I contacted Dime and I asked them about it. And Eileen Roche herself has assured me, she actually answered me back and she said they have made miles worth of technology improvements on that snap hoop and the monster snap hoop and so I went ahead and ordered another one and it is on the way. So when it gets here I will finish this quilt, this heirloom quilt, I will finish it and I will also finish that wreath quilt which is nice. I want to get it done before uh, Christmas. I was not looking forward to hooping and unhooping and hooping and unhooping with a traditional hoop. Not my idea of a good time. Okay. So there's that. What else? I talked to the owner of my local quilt shop, Joe, at Scrappy Quilter in Shirts, Texas. And I asked her, I said, hey, um, can I come by during the lunch hour and sew? And she was like, sure, that'd be fine. And I said, oh, good, because I think that's really going to help me improve my, you know, that's going to like double my, my sewing time. I can take off at lunch, head over there, and because the store is only like, I don't know, five or six minutes from my office, I can get there and then I can um, sew during lunch and get things done. And so that's going to be really nice. I'm looking forward to it. But when they have classes, I can't do it during those days, of course. But that's just really nice about that. And next Wednesday, the 19th of February, I will be at Scrappy. They're having a Marty Mitchell log cabin class. It's a log cabin ruler class. And look at this. I'm going to show you this up close. I think we're going to make this table runner. You bring your own layer cake and this is what you can do with uh, two layer cakes right here. But it's a it's a special way it's a special way to cut a 10 inch block using this ruler that they have. I'm really interested to see how they do that. So that'll be really exciting. I'm looking forward to that. So the class was like $30. I'm going to bring my camera and I'm going to give you guys a tour of my local quilt store. And then I'm going to talk with the instructor and we'll just say hi. And of course you can't sit through the whole class obviously, but you have a peek back there of the classroom and just kind of give you an idea of what Scrappy is all about. I really enjoy being there. So the other day I, I don't remember which Facebook group I was looking at. Oh, our Facebook group for Power Tools with Thread. I'll put a link to it below. Y'all, we're almost 900 members. And it's only been on for like, I don't know, not even a month. Amazing. So join, say hi, post pictures of your projects. Tell us what you're doing. I really want to see all of your work. You guys get to see mine all the time. I want to see your work, okay? And I'll tell you, we've got some really good administrators that work um, approving that you have to send a request and when you do that you'll get a notification when you've been approved so even though it's a public group uh, you still have to request and you know we'll go through there and look you guys wouldn't believe the people who say oh I want to be part of your Facebook group people who um, sell power tools people who drive heavy equipment and sell heavy equipment I'm like no <laughs> Because the title is Power Tools with Thread, so they're like, oh, Power Tools, chink. No, no. So we, uh, we do go through them and look and make sure that the people who are requesting to be members of our group actually sew, quilt, embroider, you know. So anyway, so anyway, I, I, I can't remember if it was RV Quilters or I was some other, some quilting Facebook group. Somebody put up a picture of the most adorable baby quilt. She made this quilt and posted it. Look at this. Is that the cutest thing you've ever seen, ever? That is so cute. You know me, I love applique quilts. And so I was like, oh, I gotta have that. So, you know, squirrel, off I go. <laughs> Went to Amazon and ordered Animal Parade. And I said, oh, I can't wait till that book comes in. I'm just so excited. And I wanted to go look at the quilt again. And I looked at it again and I read it again. And it said Animal Parade 2. And I said, oh, man. So I had to go back and buy another book. <laughs> 
Oops. Attention to detail, Becky. So I've got two animal on, animal parade books, but and they're for the most adorable applique baby quilts. These are really nice, you guys. I'll link to them below too. They come with the paper applique um, patterns in the back of the book. Just as, as easy and cute as it can be, you know I'm going to use Simply Applique for this. So anyway, I'm reading through the book and whatnot, and it's these books are, are uh, the author is Sherry Leffler. And I'm reading through, and it gets to the back page about the author, and um, she must have moved, because this one says she lives in Las Vegas, Nevada with her husband, Ken. Oh, wait a minute, with his lengthy what? With his lengthy career with the United States Air Force. So he's at Nellis Air Force Air Force Base in Nevada. And so that's why, so she moved. Book two, she moved. Book one, he was stationed here in San Antonio. And this says that she lived in Holotus, which is right up the street from me, and worked at Memories by the Yard, which is the quilt store, one of the quilt stores way on the northwest side of San Antonio. But uh, I was like, hey, a local girl. I'm glad I read the back of this one right now because I was going to make my way over there one day and go hunt her down and somebody would look at me and go, you missed the boat, Missy. She's gone. <laughs> it's fine. Never a bad trip to a quilt store, right? Okay, so today when I went to the quilt store to go ask Joe if I could uh, sew at lunch, you know, I'm just, you're looking at the fabrics and you're just like, oh, look at that. Oh, look at, oh, that's a pretty old. I've never made a bumblebee quilt, but they had sunflower and bumblebees right there in the front. I had purchased the other day or two ago I was in there, I purchased this Via Rosa Designs Lickety Split. Very uh, quick quilt to make. Look at that. Okay, I'm trying to hold it so the glare from the light behind the camera isn't bad. But see how that's going to show uh, feature fabrics. You'll be able to see big prints in that. And so I went ahead and picked up. I picked up. This will be my binding. It has little bumblebees on it in their little trail. That'll be my binding. And I picked up these really adorable sunflowers. Look at these. Isn't that great? Sunflowers are so pretty. Love them. And uh, some, whoop, sorry Harley. Green dots. And I got uh, yellow dots. Uh, it's little tiny white dots that go with it. And I picked up an orange. These are the blenders. These are the, the kind of solid looking blenders. And then this came with it too. These are the... Um, what do they call these? What are those things called where bees live? Hives. <laughs> That's what they're called. <laughs> Picked up the hives. And for the backing, this looks like a honeycomb with lots of bees. And I got four yards of this for the backing. So I figured I wanted to bring these home tonight and let you guys see them all. Okay. Won't that make a cute quilt? I'm sorry, Harley, you just lay there right under my feet. Y'all's dogs don't do that, of course, do they? Just mine. So I thought that this would be really cute. Whoops. This would be really cute. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and cut it up here tonight. Uh, iron them all, get them cut. She's going in the house. She's like, you've hurt my feelings. It's all right, baby girl. <laughs> Poor thing. One of the things I had wanted to show you guys, I've shown you this before, but for you new subscribers, oh my gosh, you guys. I went over 10,000 subscribers. Can you believe that? I can't believe that. So I got an email from YouTube and it had like a, a number counter and it was a big bar on my screen. It was rolling up numbers, rolling up numbers, and then it went 10,000, boom, and there was confetti. Of course, it's a picture on the email, but still it was cool, you know, and they're like, yay, good for you and everything. So. I really appreciate y'all subscribing and thank you for all your thumbs up. That's great too. That's good for the old Google Analytics and whatnot. So, uh, you know, the other day I watched Karen from Just Get It Done Quilts and she was showing that YouTube had sent her this really nice plaque for her 100,000th subscriber. And I was sitting there going, I want one of those. <laughs> Who knows? She's been doing this for six years. Just love her channel. So, uh, you never know. Maybe it'll happen to me. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Um, all right. So we talked about all this stuff. Talked about, oh, so I was going to show you how I, how I, 
uh, store my Via Rosa Designs uh, patterns. This is a photo album, a 4x6 photo album I picked up at Hobby Lobby. This is it. And I just put them in here like this because they have the instructions on the back, see? So this is just the greatest way. And every once in a while, this is from the paper company. Every once in a while, they'll have paper company half off. So you can go in there and get these things on sale. This is the best way to store these Via Rosa Designs patterns. I didn't come up with this myself. I'm not that smart. Uh, Julie from down at Two Chicks Quilting in Ganada, she doesn't like that. My calendar. So I am using my uh, handy dandy quilter's planner because you guys, I'm there's a lot going on. Uh, the course Wednesday the 19th I will be in the Marty Mitchell log cabin class at Scrappy Quilter. Uh, the 20th on Thursday I'm going to QuiltCon in Austin and I have an interview with their chairman or executive director and uh, take you guys around on a field trip for that. And so uh, my friend Lisa, y'all have seen Lisa before in my videos. She and her husband are going with me and my husband, and we're taking two RVs up to Austin. So we're going to go up there and RV up there, and then Lisa and I will hit the show, and the boys will do whatever the boys do. And then Friday morning, we're taking off, and we're going to Brenham, Texas, and that's where Bluebell ice cream is made. And so we're going to tour the, uh, the Bluebell plant. I don't think they have tours. I think they have this observation deck, and you can walk around up there and see how all that's done. You guys want to see that? That'd be cool, huh? I'll take my camera and see if they'll let me take pictures of all that ice cream being made. So then Saturday is the Friendship Quilt Guild's Quilt Show on Saturday. So uh, I'm going to be there and have my camera. So that's going to be, I've got three field trips next week, just boom, boom, boom. Then um, the end of the month, there is the, uh, there's a quilt show with like 150 to 200 quilts in LaGrange, Texas. And that's where the quilt museum is too. So I talked to my husband about it and he said, let me, let me, let me put, you know, let me think about it. So that, with that right now, that's, that's a 70% uh, we're going to go right now. So in March, I am going to be doing a Facebook Live with Eileen Roche from Designs and Machine Embroidery. How exciting is that? <laughs> I, I about fell over. I haven't picked the exact um, date yet. She said any Thursday in March. And so I don't, I don't know, you know, that live stuff. That's a, you guys wouldn't believe when I cut out of these videos. <laughs> Y'all say, oh, do a live event. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that, but I'm going to go ahead and do that with Eileen Roche uh, from Designs and Machine Embroidery. That will be awesome. It's going to be one of those Thursdays. It'll be at 1 o'clock Central in March of this year, and I will, as we get close and set a date, I will let you guys know. Okay, so I'm running out of February. I need to get back with her. That's it for now, and uh, I will talk to you guys soon, okay? Go sew something. Bye.